What makes a place amazing? Is it having outstanding natural beauty? Might it be size or shape or color? What makes one place more amazing or outstanding than another? We might not be able to answer that question, but all of us know the feeling of standing in an incredible location and having our breath taken away by what we're seeing. We hope this video gives you that feeling because it's a collection of some of the most amazing places on planet Earth. For more than 60 years, the Delancey Trolley Terminal underneath the Williamsburg Bridge in New York, USA was nothing but an abandoned terminal, rendered obsolete by the closure of the trolley service. In October 2016, a process began that transformed the derelict old site beyond all recognition. Now it's the world's first underground park. This striking, ambitious project has created a green space beneath the city streets by collecting sunlight through a glass shield into a parabolic collector and reflecting the light onto a distribution dish that lights up the subterranean cavern just as brightly as the day outside. That provides the plants here with all the energy they need to kickstart the photosynthesis process and allows the greenery to thrive in this most unlikely of locations. The site now contains over 70 different species of plants, numbering over 3,000 in total, all of which live off natural sunlight combined with a few artificial supplements. It's now known as Low Line Park, and walking into it is like stepping into a grotto from a fairy tale. You might not think of airports as being beautiful places, but that's only because you've never seen Ashgabat International Airport in Turkmenistan. This breathtaking new development was built by Turkish engineers in 2016 with a design inspired by falcons, the national symbol of Turkmenistan. Unsurprisingly, the Guinness Book of World Records recognizes the airport as the largest bird-shaped building in the world. The beauty isn't confined to the airport's exterior, though, Inside, you'll find that every inch of the structure is ornately decorated, including a beautiful and elaborate carpet that covers the whole ceiling. The architects were especially pleased with the BUP terminal, which was built for the exclusive use of the president of Turkmenistan and invited guests. The terminal was designed after the shape of a dove, the international symbol of peace. At night, the whole structure of the airport is picked out on multicolored neon lights making it visible from miles around. Despite the elaborate decoration, this is still a fully functional airport, welcoming 14 million passengers each year. Time travel is impossible for the science of the 2020s, but you can get an experience that's a little like traveling through time by visiting the Rennick Underground Museum under the main market square in Krakow, Poland. Archaeologists finished working on the freshly excavated site in 2005, and once they moved out, the city's authorities decided the best use of the space would be to turn it into a museum and show visitors everything the experts had learned. The remains of a village destroyed by Tartar raiders in 1241, some of Poland's oldest aqueducts, and a mostly undisturbed cemetery. All of the exhibits are highlighted by modern technology, including laser lights, holograms, three-dimensional projections, and smoke shows. 37 enormous touchscreens have been installed within the tunnels and caverns, all of which host displays that tourists can either watch or interact with if they so desire. The idea is that visitors arrive in 12th century Krakow when they enter the museum and gradually walk through the ages until they emerge in the present day at the other end. This is everything that an interactive museum should be. Not everyone can see the beauty in Merzlotnik, but to those who can, it's a stunning city of ice. Found in the village of Novi Port in Russia's Yamal Peninsula, this is the world's largest refrigerator and the perfect way to store all the fish that are caught in the village so they can be sold around the world. The history of fish storage here began in 1930, after a fishing survey leading to the opening of the Novopordovsky fishery the following year. By 1940, there was a whole shipyard here, hosting a fleet of ships that caught so many fish, there wasn't enough space or time to process them all in a single day. It was decided that the construction of a permafrost storage facility was the best way forward. 
and work began on that idea in 1950. The tunnels that make up the facility 40 feet below the ground were dug out manually using picks, a process that took 10 years. The workers did such a good job that Merzlotnik has never required a single day of repair or reconstruction work. It looks the same now as it did in 1960 when it was completed. These days, there aren't quite so many fish being caught in the area, so the vast icy cavern is of more interest to tourists than fishermen. In 1973, Spanish architect Ricardo Bofil was out walking when he came across a dilapidated cement factory from the First World War on the outskirts of Barcelona. Everybody else saw it as an eyesore, but Ricardo saw it as an opportunity to build his dream home. He acquired it at a knockdown price and then spent the next 45 years of his life turning it into the beautiful palatial dwelling that it is today. For all its beauty though, Ricardo still considers it to be unfinished. He's renamed his home as La Fabrica, and although he lives inside it, he considers it an ongoing project and believes that he'll continue renovating it and adding to it for the rest of his life. After so much work and attention, the old building is almost entirely unrecognizable. The former factory floor is now a conference center and exhibition room, with other space within the building converted into a private cathedral. Where there were once blocks of brute cement, there are now gorgeous arc windows allowing light into the polished marble rooms he's created within the former silos. It's a building like no other in the world, and putting a price on it would be impossible. Speaking of turning unwanted trash into something beautiful, here's a whole floating park made from recycled plastic waste in the Netherlands. It's a creation that came from the minds of the Recycled Island Foundation, and you'll find it in the Dutch port city of Rotterdam. While there's space for a few human visitors on the floating park, it was built for the use of wildlife. The park's inventors figured that as plastic waste had done so much damage to the local environment, the least they owed the local wildlife was to turn that plastic waste into an advantage and give the flora and fauna a new home. The hexagons that make up the floor of the park cover 1,500 square feet and are all made from plastic gathered from the water. A canal runs through the middle of the platforms, providing a space for small fish and birds to shelter and nurture their young until they're strong enough to fend for themselves. The rough undersides of the platforms have been designed to allow fish spaces to leave their eggs and give plants space to grow. It seems they've thought of everything. If we offered you a free choice of materials to build a house from, you probably wouldn't choose to use dishwashing detergent. That's because you don't think like Katrin, the eccentric Austrian woman who's built a dome-shaped home out of concrete and dishwashing detergent in Costa Rica. It looks like something the Teletubbies might live in, but it's a fully functional modern home that she calls Green Moon Lodge. Katrin is originally from Vienna, but fell in love with Montezuma, Costa Rica after visiting on vacation in her teenage years. She moved permanently in 2017 and took a job in a craft brewery, building her home in her spare time with the help of some local contractors. The walls of her home are made by mixing the detergent foam with concrete to make a solid yet pliable material. Fitting the blocks together according to Katrin's carefully drawn plans resulted in the creation of a unique three-domed structure and a one-of-a-kind forever home for this zany European traveler. She even rents the Green Moon Lodge out to tourists for a few days each year while she takes her own vacations elsewhere in the world. Despite appearing to be clumsy creatures, goats are surprisingly good climbers. That's why you'll often find them on the side of mountains. If you're willing to go as far as Morocco, though, you might find them climbing trees. Argan trees provide great sources of food for goats and food is even more important in an area that is frequently subjected to droughts. The trees ripen every June, and each year when they ripen, there's a herd of goats waiting to climb them and feast upon their fruit. A human would struggle to climb the trees because of their gnarled trunks and their plethora of thorns, but none of that seems to bother the goats. Perhaps that's because they've been climbing the trees for several centuries with kids taught by their parents. Their cloven feet are perfect for the task, 
as they grip onto the branches using their two toes and use their claws to grab onto either the trunk or the next branch along and pull themselves higher up. They might look precarious, but they're perfectly safe and stable. Medina is Saudi Arabia's holy city, but many of the millions of pilgrims who visit it every year aren't aware that it's built on the basalt flows of an enormous volcano field. If they wanted proof of that claim, all they need to do is travel a short distance outside the city limits and visit the volcanic field known as Harat Kebar, home to some of the most extraordinary examples of white volcanoes on the planet. Unlike most volcanoes, which are either dark gray or black, these mountains are made from commandite, a silica-rich, ingenious rock that usually appears blue or gray. Harat Kebar covers an area of almost 9,000 square miles and was formed by a series of volcanic eruptions dating back 5 million years. The residents of the city needn't worry about being engulfed in lava, though. None of the volcanoes have erupted since the 7th century and they're now thought to be dormant. Seen from above, the area looks more like the surface of the moon than anything on Earth, which is probably why the occupants of the International Space Station have taken so many photographs of it. Running out of space to build on is a common problem in the world's most densely populated areas. Creating taller and taller tower blocks is the solution that's usually proposed to solve the problem. But in Jakarta, Indonesia, a different idea has been implemented. There, a gigantic shopping mall has grown a whole village on its back. The rooftop of the shopping center is now a whole bustling suburb complete with paved streets, dozens of houses, a park, and even a private tennis court for the residents to use as they please. This new ultra-modern neighborhood has been nicknamed Cosmo Park, and you'll find it on top of the Thamrin City Mall in the city of Jakarta. You can even drive all the way from the regular streets up to the streets in the sky by using the same ramp that provides access to the mall's car park. After Cosmo Park showed the way, a similar development called The Villas was built on top of the Mall of Indonesia, and more may join them in the future. With Jakarta beaten only by Tokyo in terms of population density, it's important that no roof space is wasted. So it isn't. The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit are, as we all know, fantasy stories. The inspiration for those stories still had to come from somewhere, though, and for author J.R.R. Tolkien, that somewhere was Puzzlewood in Colford, England. This mystical forest seems almost too perfect to be real, and it's no surprise that Tolkien would have been inclined to believe in magical beings after paying a visit to it during his youth. The rocks are thick with moss, the tree formations appear to have been weaved and wound by the hands of giants, and pathways run and twist through the woods like labyrinths. In ancient times, Puzzlewood was a cast-iron mine dating back to the Celtic era before the arrival of the Romans in Britain. The Romans certainly made use of the mines when they arrived, though, and if you penetrate deeply enough into the foliage, you might still find the remains of a few ancient, broken-down mining buildings. Despite the addition of a gift shop and a few more modern age elements, Puzzlewood has still managed to retain an eerie, timeless feeling. We imagine it's a scary place to get lost after it turns dark, though. If weird and wonderful places are your thing, you're bound to love Froggyland and Split Croatia, so long as you don't mind the slightly macabre sight of more than 500 stuffed frogs. You're bound to be amused by the sight of frogs doing human things like dancing, singing, working, and playing the piano. The frogs and their unusual settings are the work of 20th century taxidermist Ferenc Mere, a slightly eccentric Hungarian who spent 10 years of his life putting his collection together before declaring it complete in 1920. There were actually more frogs back then. Mere's notes suggest there ought to be over 1,000 frogs, so the whereabouts of the rest of them are a mystery. Mary's attention to detail is extraordinary. Rather than cutting the frogs open, he stuffed them through their mouths with cork, then posed them so precisely that each finger and toe is permanently pointed exactly where he wanted them to go. He spent years trying to find somewhere to exhibit Froggyland permanently, 
but couldn't find any willing partners in Hungary. Fortunately, the museum in Croatia agreed to take them off his hands before he croaked. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.